On this video I want to share with you how easy it is to paint four different styles of daisy using the simple petal technique that I showed you in my first video, How to Paint a Daisy. Um, we will be doing uh, ones where they look upwards. This is a drooping one, so all the petals are falling away. This one um, is how it would look, a daisy would look from behind. And on the last one it's um, uh, similar to this one but all the other petals are either fallen at the back or they're out of sight. Um, I won't be going into detail for the actual stroke and how you hold the brush and everything um, because obviously that's, that's in more detail in my first video. Uh, but I will be showing you how to float shadows on your daisies to give them more dimension. So you can see here there's a float of brown earth on the uh, bottom of the centres and it really does bring them to life. Um, so I'll be showing you um, in detail how to do that uh, so you can combine it with the petal strokes um, and a little bit of line of work here for the stalk and then produce your own daisy designs. So whereas on the first one we did a circle and then we sort of did this sort of thing to get placement for our petals. Okay, um, the first one I'm going to do is an oval and then I'm going to fall through like this, like so. And I tend to uh, leave a gap at the top, say where 12 o'clock would be on this one, because I want this daisy to be looking um, like it's, it's pointing upwards. Okay, so I'm taking some white paint. It's a number eight filbert brush that I'm using, which has got the curved top, which makes it easier to get the petal shape. And you're pulling inwards towards the center on each petal. Um, I've actually put um, some Joe Sonia Flow Medium into my Joe Sonia paints because they're good quality and therefore they are thicker paints. Obviously if you were using cheaper acrylics you might find they're runny enough um, in the first place and you don't need to put any medium in. But you can see on here, look, they hold their own. They don't run out. Um, they're just bleeding out a little bit into my damp um, uh, membrane that I've got here. Okay. So... Um, I might not use those exactly but you, as a guide, but I'll play around with it a little bit. So the first one I'm going to put is over here. So it's down and twist. Oh, that's true. Twist off. And then I'm going to put another one next to it actually about here. Coming into the centre. I love doing flowers because it doesn't matter how sort of uneven the petals are and that because in nature they would be so so we're using this as a guide here so down twist and over and then I'm going to put another one here do you see what I mean about I've left the middle sort of roughly 12 o'clock as a gap because that would be how to make it look right how the petals would fall and then come over here and I'm going to have one coming in there And I think that would most probably do for the moment. Pop a little bit of white on here. Like so. Okay, so I'm going to take some sort of mustard yellow. This is um, yellow oxide. I'm using the same brush to fill it in. Always pick your paint up and go to the middle and then spread out so you don't get ridges. It's tempting to put your brush straight down where you need it to go, which can be on the outside of, of a design, but um, it's always better to push down in the middle and then spread the paint out. So I'll just try that. We'll need another coat. Okay, so we just let that cool a little bit. And now I'm gonna show you how to put on a little bit of shadow which makes all the difference. This wasn't covered in the first video, so I'll run through with you with the brushes. Um, you can either use a brush that is a flat, so in other words, it's flat across the top, or you can use an angle, all right? It doesn't really matter. I started off with flats for a long, long time, and then I moved on to angles, and now I love them, so I always tend to use them for my shading, but you can get the same results. The thing to remember is that when you uh, load a, an angle brush, you load the paint 
on the long side. All right, so I wet that brush. Now this is a 3 8 which I think will be about right. Okay, we're gonna need a little bit of flow medium on a tile just to load our brush in. And if you can see that on the white tile, I'll just turn the paint round. And then what you do is you pick up some flow medium on your brush, blend it in. You don't want it sitting there as a big blob of, of medium, but this is gonna help you blend your shadow, your brown paint across your brush. So I then go back to my uh, palette of color and just on the long side of the brush on the corner, I'm gonna take a little bit of brown paint. You never pick up more than a third of your brush because you need the extra space in the hairs to blend and soften the shadow out or the color out. So about there. And I come back here and on the spot, I go backwards and forwards. You see that? So I push down, handles really upright. Feels a little bit dry, so I'm just going to pick up a bit more medium and then back on the spot. There we go. So I'm blending up and down just slightly, but you mustn't get the brown paint or whatever colour your shadow is all the way across to the other side of your brush. Okay, so both sides are blended. So I come to my daisy and I want the shadow to be along the front edge here. All right, so I start up here. Handles nice and upright, got my little finger supporting me. Okay, so I tend to start there, do a little couple of strokes just so I can feel that how much paint is and how the blending has gone and if it's good enough. And then you come along that edge and lift off and you can go over it a couple of times. Right. Take some white paint again and all I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore these sort of three lines where they sort of fell through. I'm going to add just some coming along here and they're almost going straight across because this is a daisy that's looking upwards. So I'm going to put one here. Okay, like so. Come back round and do this one the same on the other side. So it's coming along literally the bottom of the shadow that you just put on. So down and twist and lift off. And you can see already how it's starting to look like it's pointing upwards. And then I just do an extra one, one way. It doesn't matter if you go there or there. Just put another one down. Like so. So you can see that daisy is looking upwards. And then to finish it off, if you've got a stylus or something like that, okay, you can just take some white and then I just sort of handle up right. Just nice to add a few little dots if you want to. So on this one I'm going to show you, but I can do it underneath. So again we do the oval and we can grab a chalk pencil or a soap pencil and again we can pop on some, um, some lines like so. It's only got the petals at the, the side nearest you. Okay, so turning it upside down because you always come towards you with the stroke. All right. So, down and twist and reload. These ones are curving that way. Curving that way. Okay, so now you've got one that's going like this. And on this one, Again, I'll take a little bit of the white and just sort of fill it in. It might not necessarily go as wide as I've gone with my um, initial soap pencil. Although it looks quite good, so it seems to be working. Like 
pop on some yellow. Okay, so I'll take my brush pick up a little bit of flow medium blend it out so it's into the hairs corner only of the long side into the paint come back here and blend out nice lot of pressure handle upright making sure the paint doesn't get all the way across okay let's move that to the side of it and then I'm going to come round handle upright start it off nice lot of pressure sweep round and you can do it a few times till you're happy with it like so Okay, so on this one, the stalk could still be coming from the bottom, the same as the one above, but this one is drooping. And again, if you want to, you can add with a stylus, pick up some white paint. I love this style one, with the dots tumbling off. It's quite whimsical, it's lovely. Okay, something like that. Okay, the next one I want to show you is similar to the first one, but instead of the petals coming across here, they're actually uh, drooping down. So it's, I suppose in a way, it's a cross between these two. All right, so again, you need an oval. Let's move that across. You need an oval for it. Okay, and you're gonna have petals at the back and petals at the front, but this time the petals at the front are going to be here, are going to be longer than at the back. So in other words, the opposite to this one. Okay, so we'll have them shorter at the back and longer at the front. So shorter, longer, longer, like so. We can always add an extra one in there. Okay, so take the brush and some paint. So these ones are shorter so one there like so okay so you can see this is tumbling over all right and On this one, I can do all the petals. Nice lot of pressure at the beginning so the handle comes up right. Okay, take some yellow. Okay, fill that in. There we go. Nearly done. And then again, if you wanted to add any dots, you can do. Like so. Okay, and then the very last one I want to show you is one that's looking completely away from you. So for this one, I'm actually going to do a circle Okay, and then I'm going to still put the lines falling through. Take some white paint. 
just oh, that's a hair there. Start with one about here. Down and lift off. Down and lift off. And on this one we do all the petals. Okay, before we do the centre, because it's not actually the centre, it's the back. Because this petal, this flower, rather, is looking away from you. And then you don't need any actual shading on this one because we can actually be filling it in or doing the back with green because this would be the very back of the flower. It's looking away. So we're literally going to just tap on a little bit of green like this. Okay, and at the moment it looks like it's a, a daisy with a green centre, I suppose. But what you need to do is just take a liner brush, okay, which is one of these. This is a mid-length liner, so it's not really short, not really long. It's my favourite one. Okay, um, load it with a little bit of um, flow medium to, so the paint doesn't dry out. Take some green, and then I tend to come to my tile and sort of work it through you can't quite see there, can you? I'll move over. So here. So you're twisting the brush through the paint. There we go. So I'm rolling and twisting. Okay. And then you can come to here and just have it going over to the side. It doesn't matter if it's going over the petals. It almost looks better because it's showing that it's in front. So I'm going to start somewhere in the middle of the green. It's it's the same colour, so it's not going to make any odds, but if you imagine that it would be coming from about here, lay it down, and bring it down as a stalk. And the minute I do that, it now looks like a flower, I'll bring it up closer, that's completely going away from you, all right, because you've got the, the green on the back and the green of the stalk nearest to you. All right, there's no shading to be done on that. Okay, so basically four different ways of, of doing daisies. You've got the one in my first video, or five in fact, where it's facing towards you. That's a good one to learn with. And then you've got looking upwards here, uh, drooping down as if it's lost its petals or those ones are out of sight. This is very similar, but it's got the back petals on. And then finally, this one that's looking away from you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to... Uh, Share some videos with you again soon. Bye.